Hey everyone, Rogue Guild here. Welcome back to The Division 2. And today we have got to take a few minutes to break down some of the latest lore that's been dropping from this season, First Rogue. Now, I just want to give this right at the top as we're quickly going to be getting into the details here. This is your one and only spoiler warning for everything to follow in this video. If you're not caught up with the lore and the comms for this season, be warned. Okay, so for the record, this season so far has been packed with tantalizing lore bits. From the Descent Comms crossovers with the Hearts on Fire audio drama as well as Heartland, rest in peace. I did a video breaking some of that stuff down, but the manhunt itself has been giving us lots of pretty valuable insights into Keener and his operation. New information with Viper, the rogue that went undercover in the Black Tusk while working for Keener. Her accounting of Natalia Sokolova's movements and motivations. Bits about Mackenzie Merritt, the deceased president Andrew Ellis. Just a bunch of stuff across the board that so far has been super compelling. I hadn't quite had the time nor that main drive to make a video on any of it yet. However, with the latest Manhunt trial of Leto this past week, we got what I think was our most interesting lore drop yet, with key reveals about the past and big teases about where the finale for this season may be heading. So, I'm ready to dive in. Let's waste no further time and get right to it. Alright, so, the Leto trial. The weight of the comms that we got this week is a bit deceptive, as the majority of them are one-on-one -on -one conversations between Manny and Mari, which is totally fine, but compared to all of the ones we have so far with Keener himself, you might be skeptical. Trust me, though, there's some bombs dropped in here. I also just wanted to quickly mention that the gameplay segments for this Manhunt trial were, in my opinion, easily the best of the three that we've gotten so far. Now, obviously, the overall structure has not changed. I think this model has played itself out. I'm very eager for us to get to the new season's 2.0 model in October, but between Anna delivering several more impactful lines here instead of just the hotter, colder extent of the first two, she talks about morality, tiptoes on the conversation of AI consciousness, very intriguing, and just the objectives themselves felt a bit tighter. Still not a fan of the main mission replays they're having us do, though, as it has no narrative ties to the actual trial or anything else, so hopefully we can move away from that in the future, but let's get to the lore itself. What did we learn? Let's start with two of the more one-off bits and reveals that we had, as they don't directly tie into the larger narrative, but I found them to be quite good. Firstly, a year drop. Now, some of you might be like, what on earth is he talking about? The briefest of recaps I can give here is that ever since the launch and marketing of The Division 1 over eight years ago, the franchise has historically dodged addressing what year it is within the game's world and lore, even going so far as to writing 20XX within the final cutscene for Year 5 Season 1. I always had my suspicions and arguments given a few clues that we had, but thanks to this calm, it can all finally be put to bed. Take a listen. Keener thinks I don't know what he's doing. Do you know what he's doing? Not really. Do you want to know? Not really. Do you think it would make a difference if you did know? Honestly? Probably not. Okay. So what do you want to do? Invent a time machine and go back to 2015 and shoot Gordon Amherst in the head. 2015. Finally, it is addressed. This was always my theory, as like I said, they had alluded to this back when The Division 1 launched, but this seemingly confirms it as many references going back to that year to stop Gordon Amherst from creating and releasing the Green Poison. This would mean that Black Friday 2015 is when the outbreak began, The Division 2 then takes place in the summer of 2016, our current timeline in-game is late October of 2016, and transmedia projects like The Division Compromised and Hunted are in 2017. So, like I said, relatively insignificant to the larger narrative, but very gratifying for me personally. Moving on, we then need to take a quick detour to discuss this week's Descent Com. I know, it's not Manhunt related, I'm sorry. But not only is this relevant to the central storyline, but similar to the 2015 drop, this one line given is very gratifying for me as it's a point that I've been arguing for some time now. Take a listen. I don't get how our comms are their comms. Manny, seriously? It's the same network. It's like you work at the same place. You use the same internet connection. If you have permissions, you can just look at anything you want on anyone's computer that's connected. So we can hear everything they're planning. That's great. You could, but Nat figured out the exploit and was working on a fix. Was it ready? Kind of. She needed more power to run the servers. That's what she was having me set up. Bertie? Did you set it up? Yeah, because I thought I was working for you. Fucking Johnson told me it was to help take down the rogues that plagued the division. How the fuck was I supposed to know you were the rogues? We're not. You're fighting the Black Tusk. Cal is with them. If he's in charge and you're fighting him, you're kind of rogue, my dude. 
There you have it. As you heard Birdie say, by technicality, by law, the division reports to Calvin McManus, probably solely now given that President Ellis is dead. And so if he says that we are allying with the Black Tusk and Sokolova, then by us defying that and fighting back, we are, by definition, rogue. This does not mean that we are morally in the wrong, as many thought I'm implying when I've said this in the past. It just means and reinforces that rogue hardly means what it did back in the Division 1, and that the lines of allegiances, right and wrong, good and evil, they continue to blur. And even though Isaac still labels us as Division agents, it's only a matter of time until the walls come crumbling down. And like we saw in the Year 6 Season 1 trailer, Keener might be way ahead of us, as he seems to have cracked the code on how to flip between Rogue and SHD at will. Alright, this then sends us further into main storyline stuff. The Lido trial here finally delivered us the scene that many have been hoping for, Manny's reaction to learning that Kelso has gone Rogue as of the end of last season. And this same calm propels us towards the final thing that I want to discuss here. So, here it is. she's doing, okay? She's coming to D.C. with them! Yes, that is correct. They are the most dangerous people on the planet! No, no, they're not, Manny. Who is more dangerous than Aaron fucking Keener? Calvin McManus, Natalia Sokolova, Birdie, Mel, Dr. Summers, make when he opens his mouth, Daddy Douglas, me, if you keep screaming like that? Oh, I'm sorry, I just... I've given up so much time and energy and I trusted her. I, this whole time, was she working with them? Was everything we did together a lie? Hey! Of course not. Kelso is complicated, but she's not a liar. She's ex-CIA. You never know. Yeah, she is ex-CIA because she's too fucking honest, and when she sees something wrong, she fixates on trying to fix it. You're, like, way smarter than me, aren't you? Oh, honey, of course I am. This isn't about you. This is about Faye and Diamond. Diamond? Yeah. Faye's mission. She was after Diamond. Kelso's been obsessed with figuring out what Diamond is. Well, that's... That's Sokolova's favorite shape. And Claire has a project code named Diamond. So, maybe that's what all of this is about. And because your comms are compromised, she's coming home to talk to you because it's not safe to share what she's found. All right. Firstly, thank you, Massive. We wanted to know what Manny's reaction would be upon finding out one of his most trusted allies has allegedly, on the surface, betrayed the Division. We didn't get it at the end of last season. That left many bummed. But we finally get it here. That was awesome. I also enjoy how this com reinforces the threat of Keener. You know, we've been having our little side chats with him, route on fetch quests for him with these trials. But Manny really does underscore here how dangerous he is. And even with Mari joking with the list of who's more dangerous, I liked that element of fear. I also like how Mari is the voice of reason here, saying what if Kelso is coming back to DC because that's the only secure way to fill us in on what's going on. We know we can hardly trust our comms these days, so that was all good. But then we get to that last part, and this is where I want to leave things off. Speaking to what the finale of this season might focus on, given we're just over three weeks away now, Mari brings up Diamond. Now this is a little tricky, because this is a case where we seemingly know more than the characters within the world do at this point in time. Thanks to the Descent comms, we know that Diamond is the AI system used by the Black Tusk. It's essentially their version of Isaac or Anna. But in the lore of the game, are the Descent comms something that all of the characters are gathering around the campfire for to listen to every week? Eh, it's kind of debatable. We also know a good bit about Diamond from the Division Hunted novel, which I won't spoil here, but it takes place 10 months in the future from where Year 6 Season 1 is at. So, given Manny's reaction here, it seems like the overall knowledge of Diamond is still pretty limited, and I want to play you all one final calm that Keener leaves us at the tail end of the Leto trial. Here it is. Excellent work, Leto. I'm glad you're starting to see the truth about your fearless leader, Manny. And there's only one more test you need to pass, Nix, before I can tell you about Diamond. So... This is certainly interesting. After last season, a lot of hints were pointing towards Anna being the big secret weapon that we might use against Natalia and Cal, and that might still be the case, but clearly they're beginning to set up something big with Diamond here. And perhaps with Anna's help, maybe Keener and Theo have discovered a vulnerability within the Black Tusk's network, one that they intend to exploit with ours and Kelso's help, at a location that might be, I don't know, in Brooklyn? <laughs> I'm sure you can all see where I'm going with this. It's certainly interesting stuff. And it's likely worth noting that originally, back when Year 5 Season 4 was going to be the thing that followed up the Vanguard season, the title of that, as revealed on the roadmap, was Black Diamond. Now, I'm sure things were reshuffled and rewritten once the DLC was delayed, but it wouldn't shock me in the least if this is just the beginning of us hearing more about Diamond, and that revelations with it will lead us into the finale and onwards towards the DLC in Year 6 Season 3.
All right, my friends, well, that is everything that I wanted to go over in this video. As I said earlier on, I think the Lido trial for this manhunt was by far the most compelling one, both in terms of gameplay flow and the lore that we received. And it makes me even more pumped for this finale. I'm very anxious to find out if we find Aaron Keener at all. If so, what's the outcome? Do we really form an alliance? Is it left more adversarial? Many directions this could go, and not long to wait before we find out. Appreciate you all tuning in as always. And I want to hear all of your guys' thoughts and reactions to this latest lore dump for the game. What do you think about stuff like the year confirmation, the rogue statement, the involvement of Diamond, any and everything. As always, can't wait to read it below. That is going to do it for me today, though, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold. Ow.